Weapon Mastery is a mechanic introduced in the 2024 Player's Handbook. This system has the potential to make each weapon feel more unique, to augment martial characters, add meaningful choices during combat, and allow them to demonstrate their, well, mastery of certain weapons. Does it succeed? Let's find out. The system assigns each weapon one of eight Weapon Mastery properties. Cleave, Graze, Nick, Push, Sap, Slow, Topple, Vex. To get your hands on Weapon Mastery, you need to be a card-carrying member of the following classes. Barbarian, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, or most prominently, the Fighter. There are other ways to get them, but these are the most direct. Fighter has no limitations on which weapons it can use with its Weapon Masteries. Unlike the other classes and a few subclasses that are more restricted in what they can and can't do, Fighter will also get the most Masteries at once and be able to use a few of them innately at higher levels. I need a weapon. A natural comparison to make with Weapon Masteries would be Cantrips. Both are situational and acute abilities acquired at lower levels that scale in power with your character. However, these Masteries act a little differently. True, they can be used in unlimited amount of times, but their use requires both specific weapons and specific triggers. I'll go through each in turn so you can see what I mean. A fan of the Great Axe? Then the Cleave Mastery might be your new best friend. When you hit a creature with a weapon that has this mastery, you can target their buddy with another attack. This only works if the other creature is within 5 feet of the first, but still, that's a lot of free attacks over the course of a campaign. You don't even have to be within 5 feet of either target, as long as both are within your reach, you're good. So, maybe you'd like to use a halberd and keep your distance. A downside is that the second attack doesn't add your ability modifier to the damage, so it won't hit as hard. I picture a big beefy barbarian cleaving through a crowd of squishy enemies using this mastery. Every set of dice you own in Dice Jail? Can't hit the broadside of a barn? Are you just downright unlucky and depressed? It doesn't matter! Not anymore! Swing away with your greatsword and miss every single attack! You'll still do damage with the Graze Mastery, an amount equal to your ability modifier used in the attack. This one is for the risk averse among you. If you value your bonus action, the Nick Mastery might be for you. Normally, if you want to attack twice while dual wielding, it takes a bonus action for your offhand attack. A rogue might try this if they miss their main attack and still want to try for their sneak attack. Nick Mastery removes the need for the bonus action, so you can stab away with your main attack and offhand attack as part of the same action, freeing up your bonus action to make a getaway or drink a potion. All it takes is a little push. Send your enemies careening to their doom with the Push Mastery. Any creature, large or smaller, can be shoved back 10 feet if you connect with an attack, opening up a lot of tactical options and the ability to help out your allies. Your DM will quickly learn to keep the Duergar away from the lava once you bust out this mastery. You can even do this at range with a heavy crossbow. If you think the best defense is a good offense, the Sap Weapon Mastery might be for you. Hit an enemy with your mace and give them disadvantage on their next attack roll. Remember, disadvantage does not stack, so try and hit a bunch of enemies with this if you can. Or switch to a different weapon after you land that first strike. Did someone yell Timber? The Topple Mastery allows you to sweep the legs out from under your foes. Each time you hit, you can force the creature to make a constitution saving throw to resist being knocked prone. Obviously, this allows you to go to town with your maul, but prone isn't great for allies attacking at ranged, so keep that in mind. Not to be confused with the spell, the slow mastery allows you to keep your foes at bay, hit an enemy, and reduce their speed by up to 10 feet. This lasts until the start of your next turn. I picture a light crossbow wielding fighter covering the retreat of her party by shooting their undead pursuers in the legs and ankles. Very cinematic. Lastly, we have Vax. I mean Vex. I mean the Vex Mastery. Hit a bad guy with your short sword and gain advantage on your next attack roll made before the end of your next turn. Obviously, everybody loves advantage, but the rogue will really appreciate this synergy. These are the eight weapon mastery options found in the player's handbook. I find these features really do add meaningful choice to combat, especially if you know how to get the most out of them. They certainly do help spice up martial characters, which are widely perceived as being weaker than their spellcasting counterparts. Masteries probably don't bridge the martial caster divide, but they definitely lay down a couple of planks. That's what I think anyway, but what do you think? Let me know your thoughts on weapon mastery in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something, were entertained, or ideally both. Be sure to do the YouTube stuff and click here to watch a video about hags.